episode four around the track podcast. Welcome back to Around the Track Podcast. My name is Connor. I'm joined here by my co-host, Alessio. This week, we have something a little different for you guys. Instead of recording the news, we're going to be interviewing a close friend to both of us and a teammate, uh, AJ Chiapetta. He is a junior at Westford Academy. I'll let him get into a little more about that. But I know I give him shit a lot about running and everything like that. But truly, he probably is a very, very talented runner uh, in the sport probably not just in our league, but in the state as well. And next two years, hopefully he can uh, put up some big numbers in some events. But AJ, introduce yourself. Uh, I'm AJ Chapetta. As Connor said, I'm a junior. I just want to say that's the nicest thing that Connor's ever said to me. (laughs) But um, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Try and get a little more. What's your uh, main event and stuff like that? How long have you been running? I've been running for, this is my sixth year of running. I started in sixth grade. And actually when I started running, it was really for basketball because I wanted to get like the best condition. And then in like seventh grade, I was winning a lot of races for my team. So I'm like, we could really go somewhere with this in high school. And yeah, here we are. So that's why you wanted to keep it going through high school. Cause that was actually one of my questions because I know a lot of kids that do it in middle school just because like, there's nothing really else to do, yada, yada. But when they get to high school, they want to experience new stuff. So you just thought maybe you'll get some success and stuff if you keep going. Yeah. And also when I first started in sixth grade, I didn't really expect to like, like it as much as I did. Yeah. Like I was like, when I first started, I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's just for basketball. I'll just be in good shape. When I actually like ran, it was actually like, I enjoyed it. So I thought I could keep going with this. There's no point in quitting. Yeah, for sure. And you have really found success. Uh, both times sophomore year for the 5K, you ran a 1707 at the Eastern Mass Divisional One uh, Championships. And then later that season in indoor, you actually ran a 45108 in the mile. Uh, you actually finished eighth in that race, too. So it's not like you're just going through the motions, you're actually improving. And like you made a giant jump, especially in cross country your sophomore year. Um, I know this year it's a little different just because we're limited. And I know not everybody did as well as we expected, especially in our team, but um, I'm going to assume it's one of those two events, but what would you consider your main event overall in running? Okay. My main event versus my, well, my main event, I would say is probably cross country. I don't know. I feel like I have a lot more potential in that Uh basically just off like my mindset. I don't know. I kind of like, the mile a little bit more if that makes sense but i feel like i'm better at a 5k than i'm in a mile okay so you prefer the mile but you think you're better at the 5k yeah but that actually that's pretty translative too. like a lot of cross-country kids especially in high school i feel like the mile and the 5k like those are like the two main events that people run and if you do well on one you it clearly translates to doing well on the other one and a 1707 to a 451 like that's not that bad and the 451 was run on a 200 meter track too. It's not like it was run on a outdoor 400 meter. So I'm sure, and especially now you could probably go faster, but it's, you definitely had had some success. Um, but as you said, junior, so you're a recent upperclassman starting this year. Um, what do you think you've improved on besides uh, just your times and your placement in races uh, for the first two years of your high school running? Honestly, my work ethic, because like when I was coming in freshman year, I like I thought five miles running five miles was obscene. Like I never (laughs) thought I'd ever be doing that. I don't know. I I feel like I was lazy. And even like part of sophomore year, I really wasn't doing the training that I should have been doing. Mm -hmm. And like, like you said, at the end of that year, I took a huge jump. I think that really has to do with my training and my work ethic, like compared comparatively from the start of the year to the end of the year. So I feel like that definitely has like a big factor in where I am right now. Have you, did you, when you were in middle school and you were running cross country, did you run track? Yes. Were you training outside? Cause like, um, I know I didn't do cross country sixth grade, but I did seventh grade 
And that summer before seventh grade, I actually went out and did like, it wasn't serious training. Like once or twice a week, I go out for like a two or three mile run. But did you ever do anything like that in middle school? No, no, I never really did anything. So the, like jump, from, middle school. So the jump from training to like uh, eighth grade to freshman year. So eighth to ninth grade, that was like a big jump for you probably. Yeah, that was huge. Cause especially in middle school, what you're running like three miles a day max. Yeah. Like, like the that. training is a completely different beast when you go to high school. Do you think you and enjoy- even for like a freshman, it's like a, from freshman to sophomore year, it's really a big difference because freshmen, the coaches try to like keep your mileage down. But like once you get to like sophomore, junior year, it really starts to end. But yeah, I think I'm doing a solid job getting used to it. Do you think you adapted well your freshman year? Yeah. I mean, like I said earlier, the work ethic, I don't know. I feel like I could have done more of my freshman year. Like I felt like I would have been fine with like my body and stuff like that. Uh-huh. I definitely think I've adapted well. And I know like I was only a sophomore at that time because you're one grade below us, but I know I tried to convince like Tom and Ben and all those guys to uh, try and get you to come run with us. And I even tried to convince the coaches because like we all knew that you're like the top dog or whatever in your grade coming through. But um, you ran a couple times with us, but I know, like you said, the coaches not really baby, but try and keep your mileage down low and like um, just make sure that you adjust well. But do you think you would have, if you changed that way, if the coaches let you run with us, do you think you would have had the same success or do you think it would have been better, worse injuries, not injuries, stuff like that? I think, well, f- my first year, freshman year, I was dealing with a little bit of a knee problem, but I wouldn't say that was necessarily because of the mileage I was doing. Yep. I would say that was just like a flu because I haven't had any problems since. So if I were doing full training, well, I only ran like three times with you guys my freshman year, but if yeah. I think I did that. I think my crop, like my sophomore times would have been relatively the same, but I definitely feel like I would have been better as a freshman. Okay. I wasn't bad as a freshman, but like, I wasn't particularly great as a freshman. Right. I'd say it was like a decent freshman coming in. Well, I know I said you had a big jump in cross country. What was your freshman PR? It was 18 something, I believe, right? I don't believe I broke 18. I don't remember what it was though. So I think it was low 18. So around a minute PR, like, like you said, like that's some big job probably to do with the train that the coaches are letting you put through. But um, yeah. So on the topic of training, um, I know on this podcast, we've particularly talked about, and Alessio and I have like, pretty much agreed, I think on the stuff that we've talked about, about training, but what do you prefer? Like, I know we, the main ones that we focus on is low mileage or high mileage. What do you think you benefit from the most? I say it depends. I would say for me personally, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Cause I haven't really gotten into extremely high mileage yet. Like the forties, like the fifties. Yep. So personally seeing the jump, I ran, I was running like 30 miles a week, my sophomore year and I saw a jump. So I think I'm like inclined to say that shorter mileage is better for me. But like, I can't really say that for sure because I haven't really done a lot of mileage yet. So now what do you, because it's also geared towards workouts too. So it's not just mileage, but the type of workouts that you do, like the centrance workout, six, five, four, three, two, one, or doing like six by 800 repeats or doing tempo or doing hill workouts, that kind of stuff. What do you think like out of like that kind of stuff, speed workouts in general, do you benefit from the most? That's a good question. I think it depends on the season. I think if we're talking cross country, tempo. Yeah, let's really stick on cross country right now. Okay. So I would go tempos are really good because like depending on what you do, you're running like two fast miles at a time. I know like a, in cross you're running a 5K, but like I think that's really beneficial in a way. And hills definitely beneficial because we didn't really do hill workouts this year. We did like one or something. So I felt like if we did more hill workouts, it would have been better. Cause we also had to wear masks this year. So I feel like if we did more hill workouts, then we could have benefited more. Oh, uh, uh, but I, and I know we've talked about this like as a team and as a group and like the, the coaches real were really were trying to like um, adapt to what was going on as much as we were and like trying to give yeah. us a little more of a break because we had to wear the mask. But I completely agree. I think if we, if we were put through the same training that we've been put through the last couple of years, I think, we would have still been able to improve. Um, 
But how about running solo? Because I know in the summertime, like we try and uh, do captain's practices and stuff like that. But running solo, running in groups, what's your preference on that? Definitely groups. Yeah. Solo, I'm not really the biggest fan running solo. Like if I have to do it, I'll do it. Usually when I do it, I'm listening to music because I don't know. Running by myself, like without music, I don't know. It's just boring to me. Right. The mileage seems so much more. I think Alessia, you can agree too. Oh, yeah. yeah, I 100% Cause, agree with that. Because you've had to do bikes and stuff uh, by yourself while we're all running because mm-hmm. of your injury and everything. Like what kind of stuff do like... I think biking is a little different because it's not as much strain like at that stuff. But like what what's going through your mind as you're biking? Honestly... I think I think my sanity's gone. Like, <laughs> I, I it's bad. Like, I will literally yell at. I've I've stopped caring what people hear. I just like will yell at random things like cars and drivers and like the freaking wind. Whenever I you get like headwind, I literally just scream. I'm like, you <laughs> suck wind. Like, well, how long are you doing? Are you doing the same amount of as we are? Like, I think because uh, we go out like typically like. 30 40 50 minute runs like, yeah i try to get at least half an hour in okay um like when i was when i had a stress fracture sophomore year and i was like stationary biking which is like super freaking boring <laughs> um i i was doing like half an hour because i was just like i can't i can't do more than that yeah. coach coach a was like oh do like 10 15 percent more to like to like match the effort level because right. biking is a little less yeah and i was like no way i'm doing like an hour a day um but then, like, this cross season, I was, like, it's my senior year. Like, I actually, like, should probably ramp it up a little bit. Right. So, I was – I was I started going, like, halfway through the season, like, 50 minutes to an hour. But that was, yeah. like, on a real bike. Yeah. So, it was a little more entertaining. Um, the most I did was I did 21 miles, and that was an hour and a half. Uh, but that was just, like – that was the last day of practice. I was, like, this is my last day of high school <laughs> cross country ever. So, I'm going to go out with a bang. Um, but, yeah, no, I typically just kind of – I don't know. I talk to myself a lot just like to pass the time because yeah. I just get so bored. Oh, I think too. That's, I mean, um, that's, I think that's the beauty of running. Like AJ Allen, like you said, you don't really like solo running. And if you do, you listen to music, but there's like stuff going through your head. Cause I know when I, run, Oh, absolutely. Like I'm all, and I'm it's, not, about it's not even, yeah, it's not even about running. Like even today, I was thinking of the most random shit when I was on my run. So it's just like <laughs> anything can come up in my mind when I'm running. Cause it's just like, and I'm, like, in the zone. Like, I know exactly where I'm going. But, yep. like, I'll, like, get out of the zone. I'm, right, like, I'm space out. Miles. Yeah, I, like, space out. And obviously not to the point where I'm in danger of getting hit by a car or something. Because, <laughs> like, my mind is, I like, I know what I'm doing. But, like, right. I'm zoned out. So, I don't know. I find it weird. I mean, that definitely helps with solo running, I think. Yeah. Do you no. – uh, how, how do you think your – I don't know if this question will make sense, but how do you think your like your training run thoughts compare to like your racing thoughts? You know, you just kind of, especially let's oh, say for a like a longer question. thing. So like a 5k, if you're racing a 5k, what kind of thoughts go through your head then as compared to just a regular training? That's a run? good question. When I'm racing a five, when I'm racing anything, I'm, my mindset is completely different than anything in practice. Like when I'm racing, it's a, like when, usually when I do runs and workouts, I'm not focused really. <laughs> like obviously i'm trying to do it as good as possible good to but, like i'm not thinking about that when it's race time i'm ready to go and like i think that's definitely part of my success is like my mindset and my mental toughness during races because like i don't give up like i would i think i have a good kick so like as a result my, my mindset is going so like i think that definitely helps me a lot too yeah and i know you and i have talked about this briefly like even recently i think the other day we were talking about it the um the fuck you attitude basically like that yeah well that's how i describe it it's like like <laughs> bulletproof mindset of like when you go into something like saying someone telling you oh you can't win oh you can't mm-hmm. do this you can't run this time just having that like screw you i'm gonna kick your ass and like Bleh. i'm just like you just like get ramped up and you get like rage and stuff like that and like the emotions start firing up oh yeah yeah no I, um yeah, absolutely when i ran at ls two years ago like it was probably like 800 out. We were passing by that part that's behind the bleachers. Yeah. Um, on the old course, the 4K course. Yeah. And like, I like slowly ride up on some kid because like the race is coming up to an end. So I started like gearing up right. to kick. And then like, so I like coast by him, not even that fast. And then out of nowhere, he just like sprints. And he, as he passes me, he's like, don't effing do that to me, man. And I was like, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> And then so it was like, yeah, no, I, I kept him in my sight as we came around the turn. We got on the track. Like, I literally kicked like I've never kicked before. I passed like three people. Right, because you're pissed off. Yeah, yeah. no, and I, I I passed even like 
just in my own and I almost passed Henry and that was like where did that kick come from yeah yeah no it's crazy what the adrenaline yeah. stuff can do to you but um that same feeling like I know we were talking about I'm like gonna backtrack just a little bit thinking about training runs like what you're thinking during I've had times where I'm on the training run and I'm visual I'm visualizing a race that I'm going to run or I've already run and I find myself oh it was a nice like jog like 7 30 7 minute run holy shit I'm like sprinting like 6 20 <laughs> 6 flat like I'm gonna pace on my training run I'm like holy shit slow down like, yeah, yeah yeah I definitely agree with that like I have runs where I'm just like thinking about a race like oh, a yeah. race that hasn't happened I'm thinking of like I, I'm just gonna throw Caleb because we were compared a lot in middle school because he was the top freshman from AB. I was the top freshman from Westford, et cetera. Yep. And, you know, sometimes I just visualize myself beating him, which I mean, right now I don't have a chance, but you never know later on, but. Right. No, but like um, the DCL champs this year, like I went early and everything and I kind of knew the course before I went, but I went early because I wanted to like walk through and like see where I'm going to do everything. And the night before I was really like, just thinking about, okay, all right, a left turn around the bleachers. All right, so you got a flat part of like grass and everything. Okay, then we're gonna take a right around the cones. All right, people are gonna be like out, off their feet because it's like a little off, like lopsided on the grass and everything. So try and like push through that because people are gonna be like uneasy and stuff like that. Like that kind of stuff just keeps running through my mind while I'm running, while I'm not running when a big race is coming up. Like, as you have you ever experienced that kind of thing? Um, in a way. I mean, I don't, when I know like what the course is, like usually on hills, I'm thinking like, all right, let's how not about go a, How about crazy. our home course? Cause you probably know that pretty well. Oh yeah. On our home course, I definitely, I'll slow down on the hills. Cause it's like, usually whenever Plus on you. our course, whenever there's a hill, there's a, <laughs> there's a huge <laughs> downhill whenever there's on a hill. So I'm watching, like I'll use the LS me for this year for the example. Like some kid was like going hard up the hills and I passed him on every single downhill. And then I ended up beating him at the end. So like when he was doing that, I was kind of just laughing to myself. Yeah. Cause he's like, he got tired out because he doesn't know the course. Right. But like, yeah. Is that how you run most courses? Like with any kind of hills, do you rest on the uphills and just bomb it down the downhills? Kind of, I wouldn't say I rest. Like I don't want to get passed by like four people, but you can example. conserve, conserve your energy. Going. Conserve. Yes, definitely. Okay. Cause it's like, I don't want to go hard up the hill. Cause I'm just going to be dead. Like the rest of the time. Cause hills take up a lot more energy than like okay. going faster. So if I'm going slower and I go fast in the downhill, I'm not really using that much energy mm -hmm. and I'm not really losing ground anyway. Now, how about a course? Like, cause I know we raced Manchester a couple of times and that's got like a mile hill, like just straight up hill. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a bomb all the way down. And if you don't sprint down the hill, like you're going to get lapped by everybody, mm -hmm. but on a course, yeah. we'll say like, I don't know, Rentham Development Center. How, what's your strategy going to that? Because there are some hills, but they're more like rolling hills. And it's like yeah. the hill only lasts for like a two seconds. Do you keep the same kind of mindset? Like once you start feeling an incline, do you can start going like conservative mode or will you push through that? I would say I can serve, but not nearly as much. Because okay. like Rentham is completely different because the hills aren't that major at Rentham compared to Manchester, compared to LS, compared to all those places. Yep. So like I'm conserving a little bit, but I wouldn't stay as much as I do on other races because that course is extremely flat. Yeah. So no, I don't really, really feel, yeah, I don't feel the need to really conserve myself like that. Mm. And especially because that course is typically the course where we're doing the championship race and where you're trying to get those big times. So that's why yeah. I only ask because like, if you're being conservative on that, maybe it's like that's a shift in mindset you could have about trying to improve the next year. Yeah. But um, we mentioned Corona and how like we're training with masks and everything like that. What has your focus been for the past cross country season? And what's your focus going into hopefully the indoor and outdoor season if we have one in Massachusetts? My focus, my cro the cross country season, I was focused on getting good 5k times. Obviously that didn't happen. The circumstances were out of our control. We couldn't really do anything about that. Yep. I think for indoor, my focus is really going to be on outdoor because indoor, like you said, we're running like on 160 meter flat tracks and like rent wall, not rent them. Waltham is like a basketball court. So yeah, I don't really think like our times are going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think my indoor season is really going to be preparation for outdoor because that's when we can have hopefully a normal season. And I, that's where I want to be like ready to go. Well, by the sounds of it, it looks like these two seasons, because for people that are not in Massachusetts, basically 
our seasons are set up to be end of February, I believe. I believe February twenty yeah, second, like the last week of February after yeah. break, I think, is what yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that week we start indoor, and then that goes until the first week in April, I believe, Something right? Something like that, yeah. And then we have like a two week break, and then we go straight into outdoor, which lasts until. I believe July 3rd. The end of the year, basically. Depending. Yeah. Yeah. Like way past everybody can be like out of school by then. But it pretty much just seems like an extended outdoor season with like a month extra, pretty much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we're just starting like with the indoor meets. Yeah. Exactly. Which really like, like what AJ said, like I'm probably just going to use them as tune up races. Like yeah. I know I talk to our coach and then because I'm typically running 1,000 or 600. And I think we both agreed like, I'm just going to focus on 600 because that's the only thing that's going to help me improve with the eight because you just get pure speed. So I'll just use that as a speed workout. I think like rust busting, definitely. Um, Maybe like doing something that's a little out of your comfort zone just to kind of like do it Mm -hmm. and focus less on the time. Like for example, like me, maybe I'd run like a two mile occasionally just to kind of like work on the endurance aspect of it. Yep. um, And not worry so much about the time because I'm not really a two miler. Um, or also you could use it to like practice racing tactically. So once again, just forget about the time yeah. and just focus on position the entire way, go a little bit slower, something like that. Yeah. Well, as you said about the season and everything, so we're in off season right now. And I know you said that you've wanted to race and everything, and you really want to like get back on the track. What are you doing to prepare Alessio for in this time of off season? Cause we got about like another month and a half, two months until we start racing again. So what are you doing to prepare and try and like get back into that? Uh, right now, nothing. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's holiday that's, season. I blame homework. No, I uh, I like took my two weeks off and then I got my wisdom teeth out. I had to take another two weeks off and then I like <laughs> I started like deadlifting and squatting at the gym again for the first time since March. And I like I got like pretty strong last winter, but then like obviously to stop. And so I, I ended right. up ramping up like too fast coming back from it. And then I had to like take more time off to because I hurt myself <laughs> deadlifting um so but i think now like break starting i can finally like, get back i've also been trying to figure out like my cardio situation now that there's snow on the ground yeah right um stationary bike your favorite yeah i mean but I have to, i'll have to invest in some kind of thing i'll have to, i'll talk to you about that later a flat screen on your t on your bike no like everything? you got the rollers or whatever not the rollers you got something for your bike so you could make it a stationary bike oh yeah so i have a road bike and i bought it middle of the summer this year because i was experiencing like kind of a lag when i was trying to ramp up my mileage to get to like above 35 so i figured there's something i have to do if i want to keep improving like Mm -hmm. i I kept i started lifting like properly higher reps instead of higher weights and i really saw an improvement in that but i figured there's something else i can do i'm shit at swimming so i had to go with biking (laughs) so i bought a road bike and um like you said like i it was fine when I was on the trail because I went on the Bruce Freeman rail trail and I did like a 12 or 15 mile bike ride every, every so often. And I was thinking to myself, yada, yada. It was, it was like, it wasn't too, too bad, like with the mental game. But then I figured, why don't I try and get a um, stationary bike? So basically it's like a stand where I prop up my back wheels where like it's turning mm-hmm. and it's on a resistant thing that I can like tighten or make it looser. So the resistance changes. And then basically I can just hop on that and basically make my road bike into a stationary bike. Gotcha. But um, how about you, AJ? Like this whole season, because we've been done since beginning of November. And I know you yeah. took your two weeks off into November and you've been training with us and you have been training, I think a little bit more than me. I've been taking a little more easier and listening to my body uh, just because of a few, uh, a few acute things. But what's your mindset of going in? How are you going to, how do you decide to train for this we'll say tune-up season of indoor in a couple months it's got to be higher mileage faster stuff i mean i've been like used to lower mileage i'm getting to the point where it's like because i want to run in college and college is a lot of miles a week it's like anywhere from 50 to 70 so oh, i yeah, think it's, for sure. if i don't start ramping up now i don't know when i'm ever really gonna have a chance to do that without getting injured have you started so talking think, to colleges yeah i have what colleges are you reaching college. out to um, I had a call with Springfield on Monday. Oh, really? So you that met was ha- Coach Steinman? Yeah. Yeah. She's, I like her style of coaching. I don't know if you got too far into it, but I think her no, style of coaching is so. like far better than um, a lot of just the typical ways of coaching. Like she really focuses on academics and like the minor stuff and everything. Yeah. 
I liked her when we had our call. I had a call with Fairfield. That was in the summer, but that was nothing serious. Yep. I took a tour to Wheaton with that co- uh, co- uh, yeah, coach. That's where Coach Hafferkamp went. I went, I took, oh my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, took a, I took a tour there. I had a call with Bentley, I think. Yeah. And that's all Ooh. I had so far. And I've sent other emails. So, so what do you, so Springfield is more of a, education and health uh, based kind of school but i'm assuming talking to whedon and uh bentley you're probably looking for business yeah definitely do you have any type like specific like marketing management entrepreneurship or you just want to do business? i haven't gotten that far yet no that's something i need to decide <clears throat> soon but i haven't really explored that yet what about uh events so track events are a little bit different in college are you thinking about staying like a mild 5k and like 3k in the winter or do you want to move up to the five and the ten uh i wouldn't be opposed to running 5ks on the track track. yeah i wouldn't be opposed to doing that i actually want to run some in college that would be i think cool Mm because it's faster than like a cross-country course because it's all flat so Mm -hmm. i think that would definitely be huge a 10k i don't know maybe when i'm in college i'd run a 10k right now i don't have interest but Obviously, I'm not doing college mileage, so right. we can see what that happens. Right, but the same thing that we were talking about, how you transition to freshman high school, they do the same thing, I, I'm pretty sure, um, going into college. Like instead yeah. of doing numbers, they give you times to run, like go off for a 20-minute run, go off for a 30-minute run, and they really, really make sure that you're like adapting with the team once you get there. But over summer, like you're just trying to maintain your um, athletic ability and everything like that. Yeah. So those only those four. So I'm assuming you want to stay local. Um. Yeah. Well, Don't we want to said go out to the crazy either. West Coast people. That's not in the plan. Obviously, if somebody reaches out, like a coach reaches out from there, we're gonna keep our options open. Yep. And we, as in my family, like yeah. Obviously, we want to either stay in New England or go to Florida because that's where we have family. But okay. like, if I get a huge amount of money from a D2 school in California, it's going to be hard to pass up on. Right. Now, is that, is that your main focus? Like, if, have you discussed it? Or are you focusing on education? Like, for instance, for some reason, if you somehow get into Harvard, but they don't offer you a running like position, but then you get into, we'll say Springfield, but they offer you little to no money. Would you still go to Springfield because it has running or would you go to Harvard? I would say... Well, first of all, I have no chance at Harvard. Second of all, because it's a high education school. That's what I'm trying to say. To be honest. It's known for its education. Yeah. For me and my family, we would take probably Springfield for the money. Yeah. Because like college is expensive now. Like I don't even, I can't even (laughs) imagine how much Harvard is per year. So I think Springfield, I don't think it's really expensive. I'm not a hundred percent. That could be wrong. But like, especially with the scholarship, because I was talking to the coach, it said anywhere from a three, two to a three, seven can get you like 20,000. 20 grand, yeah, as long as you apply for financial aid and that's each year. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's huge. I would business, probably business major, pay. you go for four years, you can get like 80 grand or whatever off your tuition. I believe the yeah, tuition. And I get to run in college. So. Right, exactly. And you could probably scrape up a little money. Like my mindset when I was applying to colleges and everything, I'm like, I want to go D1. I want to get like as much money as I can, yada, yada. But I, I've said this to my parents, Springfield is like the one exception I do where even if they give me no money or even if they just give me like five grand a year, like so 20 grand total or something for four years, I'd still take it just because like that, that little chunk of money just like it racks up and like it, like it just builds up to so much that you can save on your education. Yeah. yeah. And going off what you said about D1, I'm not really the biggest fan of going D1. And here's why. Because like obviously saying that you went to Vision 1, that's like one of the biggest flexes, but that's not really important to me. That's all I want to think do about it. it. <laughs> yeah, but if you're it's going obvious. to Vision One, I've read multiple things where they just control like everything you do. Oh, and I don't to. know if I really, yeah, I don't know if I really want to do that because like they control everything. There's so many restrictions. I don't know. Well, I just feel it. like you're like, you're like an better. investment to them. If yeah. you think about it, because you're basically going to be the image of the team and you're going to help bring the team to success. And that success translates to uh, more funding and, and like other stuff. So like they need like 
to make sure that you're doing the right stuff and they're like following like what you need to follow. Yeah. How about you, Lazio? Any colleges or anything like that? I know you said you've reached out to BYU. And you've like- yeah, no, I'm going to be honest. I've only applied to, so far, only applied to BYU Provo and BYU Idaho. <laughs> and that's it. Um, I'm I'm going to apply to Hawaii, BYU Hawaii this week. But like, yeah, no. Hawaii? Hawaii. Woo. Yeah, no, I mean, if you couldn't tell, like that's a lot of BYU. Yeah, um, I, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and not a lot of, no other colleges. Uh, but so you're just sticking with BYU. Yeah, I mean, okay. the the main reason for that, I'm gonna have to turn those mic levels down in a second because those are really going nuts. Um, okay. Yeah, it's anyway. my sister, my bad. No, 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 it's not, no, it's not your microphone. It's our it's microphone. It's our microphones. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're going, I see the I see indicators going right. right everywhere. You're good. You're good. Um. Anyway, I digress. Uh. So like BYU is like our my church's school. So yeah, that was like the main motivation to go there. Um, and then the reason I didn't apply to like any other work, any other colleges is because like BYU Idaho is like the backup essentially for BYU Provo. They, they have like a 95% acceptance rate. So okay. I already got in there. Um, so now I'm just waiting until BYU Provo to, uh, for their decision. See what your options are, yeah. Yeah. And, and they're, they're the school that has the, the D1, uh, teams and all that. And that's where like both of my sisters went there. Hmm. Um, I have a bunch of friends who go there. Um, and so in terms of running like there's no way i'm going to cop a scholarship by the end of the year right but um, i think the same but, same thing for um as i said i say dude if if you get into what well, byo idaho, idaho and idaho. they say are they d3 or d1 i don't even think they have a team oh, okay i uh, i know so hawaii let's... used to have a d2 cross-country team okay but it was like eight people and we'll, like they got rid of it we'll use hawaii say you get into hawaii and they offer you like you can run on the team and yada mm-hmm. yada but you get into byu uh provost Provo. Yeah, Provo. Um, would you go to BYU Provo or would you go to Hawaii? That's mm, see, that's kind of tough because I mean, one, I'm not really a cross country runner. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely more of like a 800 to. Do they have a track team? Mile guy. Or no, just, just they just don't even team. have like a freaking track there in, in, <laughs> in that area. There's like one dirt track in the town next to it, but like BYU Hawaii is in like the middle of nowhere. Okay. Um, but I I don't know, like I I, I want to get into the longer distances, just like for fun like run some two miles and five k's okay um because i do have some experience in that range from cross country uh but yeah i don't know BYU hawaii is also like much smaller and they don't have they're mostly just like english artistic and science majors or it's not science psychology majors Uh whereas i want to go into like engineering and stuff and byu pro has a much has like a really good engineering program uh so like maybe what i do is like take the d2 offer for like a year and then transfer if i could okay um so from Hawaii to Provo, um, but I think yeah, I think ultimately, like the, I think out of the way. yeah, yeah, I think the ultimate end goal would be to like go to go to Provo, and I and like currently my plan is to just go to Provo, run on my own for however long, join the club team. I know they have a good club team there. Uh-huh. Try to work um, on. Yeah, and then eventually, may, maybe maybe like the last season, if I if I can just like trust natural progression or whatever. But, <laughs> um, that's that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing yep. is try to see if I, if I don't make it in now, try to see if I can transfer later and walk onto the team at some point. And if not, like whatever. Right, but it sounds like you have it all planned out. And I know you've attended multiple yeah. of the meetings that the coaches have had for BYU mm-hmm. uh, Provo. Um, but I mean, that was gonna be my question. But you pretty much answered it. If the programs in the schools were run together, they were just in separate locations. But it sounds like they're like completely separate schools just like set up by the BYU pretty much name, yeah they're, they're an umbrella they're very independent of each other they're okay. mostly just like BYU and then they just kind of do their own thing okay uh well getting back to AJ I want to talk about racing now um from your memory because I know it's a little hazy sometimes uh what would you say your <laughs> best race is and why in all the best the race man, Best race is not an event, like which one I think I did the best in. A track, cross country, mile, we'll go all the way down to like four by four. Whatever you think you did the best race in, what do you, what is oh, it? Oh, definitely divisional that sophomore year. No question about cross it. Cross country? Yeah, for sure. Because my expectation, I was in the top seven, but like I wasn't really expected to do contribute at all. That I race. believe you were three, three or four. I believe that's where you were at. That race or in general? In, in general, I was like six. I think going into that race, you were, ex- you were expected to do like three. 
or third, I believe. That was this year. Was no, it, last it, year I was like it was seven. Me, it was me, Justin Austin, and I think it was you. Well, if I have picks from DCLs. Because <laughs> then it was well, Justin Lyona, right? Well, in that race, no, Justin, are no, you Justin. talking this? You're talking this year. Actually, last I don't know about year, I wasn't there. Because last year it was you, Justin. Oh, you had sorry. On I guard. Was supposed to be three. My bad. And Ben was there yeah. too. So, like, okay. I was expecting to be like six or seven. I ended up finishing second. So, I think that was definitely my best race. Right, I felt 14. really good. Yeah. And I started out in the back, not in the back of the whole race, but like for our team, I was seven. I just like, kept making my way up. Right. Because I don't know. I felt really good. I just kept going up. And that well, was all that I finished second. Yeah. Descri- so. Describe the whole thing, like, from like your experience. Cause I know you've told me basically you saw me take off and then all you just saw all West Free kids like right next to you. And then you just like slowly made your way up. Yeah, I, I I basically played catch up the whole time and it worked. Like, like start I, I don't start know to end, first. start to end. Like try and walk us through like what was going through your head. Okay, so mile one, I'm in the back for WA. I see Ben. Ben, like even he said it himself, he didn't have his best race. Oh. So I saw him slowing down. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna pass him because I feel really good. So I feel like I can pass him and not face consequences. And then I think it was Foster and Colin were like neck and neck. And this is all in the same mile, by the way. I'm passing, I pass them. I'm still feel good. Next up, I see On God and Justin. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? But in <laughs> I, like, actually, I feel fine. Yeah. So mile two, I'm with, because I remember Lion and Zach cheering me on. And they were kind of surprised that I was right with On God and Justin, because I don't even think anybody expected that. Like, I didn't even expect that. I thought I was going to be like six or seven. And then I pass on God. On God fell off a little bit. Then it's me and Justin with about 200 left. I kind of just went and I got him. So, yeah, I know he's a, little, a roller coaster. He's still, he's still a little pissed off about that. But, um, yeah, just a I, I can only imagine what that felt like when you finished the race. Like, that must have like been just like a holy cow. That was a fast race. Like, yeah, did, you, did you notice what the time was when you finished? I thought it was 17.05, uh-huh. but it was 17.07. And to be honest, what's, what makes that even more like of a question mark, I feel like I could have done better. But in a way, I was kind of like scared to go out too hard because uh-huh. like I wasn't expected to go out with those guys. So if I did, I don't know, maybe i break 17. I don't know. Because I still yeah, felt no. good like that whole race. I feel like I definitely could have done it. It's just a matter of I just didn't think I could and I didn't probably could have but so what would a takeaway from that race be what was what was your big takeaway i belong it's like i know that sounds corny as shit but like (laughs) no no that's actually really good it's like because the start of the year i was like people were saying austin was gonna beat me and he came in really well as a freshman to be fair i just said that to try to piss you off so you run faster (laughs) but (laughs) well yeah but like other people are saying it, like other sophomores yeah. are saying it too. Yeah. And then we had the relay. I beat Austin. I think I finished eighth or something. And I don't know. I wasn't really, I didn't still didn't think I was long. I wasn't really convinced. Maybe I had a good race. I don't know. But like at the end of that season, I was really like, I can do this. Like I can be up here with these guys. And that's something I didn't think about the start of the year. Yeah. It comes back to what we said about that FU attitude. Because everyone, yeah. everyone said, oh, Austin's going to beat you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just like, no. But yeah, I'm not taking anything away from him, too, because he's oh, a no, really yeah. talented runner. Austin is it's like just a naturally like, gifted and just athlete overall. Yeah. But it's like if you don't – if you think that someone's going to beat you, unless it's completely obvious, you have the wrong mindset. Yeah. Like, unless it's like, like comparing me to you. I know you're going to beat me every single time. But, like, if I were to say somebody You'll else – never say never. Like, yeah, but like, unless you drop out, it's probably not happening. I, yeah, I was but gonna like, say you beat you beat me twice this year, so. <laughs> yeah, but like, if it's somebody that I'm relatively close in skill with, why would I ever think they're gonna beat me? Even if they do, like, why would I think that? I'm just defeating myself before it starts. Now, how would you define relatively close in skill then? Just based off times. Yeah. So, how, so, so what about when Austin came in as a freshman? Because he didn't really run any 5Ks. So 
what was your comparison to him or what were you like trying to compare yourself with him with when you were trying to get into that FU attitude and stuff like that when you're going out to race? For him, it was more of like the hype that he was coming in with. He okay. was coming in with crazy hype because I think in the state race and track, he ran like a 210, 800, yep. something around there, which is really insane for a freshman. So he came in with a lot of hype. Yep. And I was like, all right, don't forget. Well, I was thinking like, don't forget about me. I was still the top ranked freshman last year. So yeah, I don't know. I kind of felt like. And, not, and again, yeah. not, nothing to put Austin down. Like I think he's more of a yeah, no, no guy anyway. So cross country yeah. isn't his strong suit. That's just my personal opinion. But like, that's like a really good mindset to have when you're going into a race. Like if you have any doubt about if you can do it or not, literally just, I, I used to look at like the, what are they called? The list of runners that are going to run seat times or yeah seat times and i'd say okay who's seated like above me who's seated below me okay so and so from uber okay that's black and orange i'm going to stick on all black and orange jerseys for like the rest of that race and if they screw me over i'm going to like chase them down that ah, whatever but um yeah no like that's actually a really good takeaway from that uh, race i don't think you've ever told me that before yeah i think it's really important to kind of you need to realize and accept like the mental shift that comes with improvement because like in your case, if you, if you do pop off, you need to like your body's obviously adjusting physically in your training, but you need, you need to like realize that. And like, I don't know, believe in yourself, trust yourself or whatever, but you need Again, to, no, you, you think it's corny. It's really not like, this is like, yeah, true no, like stuff. I know, I know when I first like realized I was good at track, like I was, I was improving a lot during like we had our 800 meter time trial no this is before that <laughs> um uh but so we'd have like our fitness runs in, in middle school which are yeah. just 800 meter time trials we do at the beginning and end of every year and i was like my first 800 ever was a 340 like, hey! that's so bad <laughs> at least like in comparison to what i can run now <clears throat> but um like i didn't break i broke three at like seventh grade and i was like oh, okay like that's like good it's better than most people but mm -hmm. still nothing like there's still plenty of people ahead of me yeah um and then like I started training with Henry over the winter of eighth grade. Uh, and then I like dropped down to like a 340. And then I like when I joined the track team in the spring, we had a like a time trial just to see what people's best events would be. And I like smoked everyone to 800. And I was like, whoa, I'm actually good at a sport. Yeah. And so I think <laughs> I think from there, I, I had to have like a shift in mentality from just like I need to be aggressive in my races because like I need to trust that I can beat these people. And because before it was just kind of like, oh, like I just want to finish the race. Right um where whereas when i started going more competitively i had to be like okay there's like 300 meters left like should i go now should i not should i should i sit on and wait for this guy or is he gonna kick me so but also like you you need to be you, know, you need to not be afraid to like be a front runner uh because that happened a lot yeah. Being, especially like if, if you're one of the top people on the team like that's gonna ha that's gonna I happen think that was one of you, my you can't coast years. behind people which is like as i've said a million times that's the reason why i didn't break five in the mile was because i was too afraid to take the lead yeah because i wasn't sure what shape i was in right um but it's also that unknown like because you've never done it right, before right. so you don't know if you can do it yeah. right like I, I get that uncertainty so like mm -hmm. it's nothing against you like it's just it's, it's from experience and like aj said like when he finished the 5k when he ran 1707 he felt he you said that you felt like you could have done a lot better, but I think that's with right. every yeah. runner after mm -hmm. every race competitive, Definitely. not competitive. Like, Oh, I could have done this. I could have sprinted up the hill faster. I could have gone down the hill faster. I could have kicked a little harder, yada, yada, yada. But no, that, that's like a great way to put it. Now, do you think you're, oh, this is for Alessia first. Um, do you think you're better at racing time or people? Time. Uh, I guess by, in terms of feel, I'm terrible at racing by feel, but that's just because like I haven't really done workouts consistently enough. Right, to, but if, if you so. know what you're running, like you have the 200 splits, like you said. Oh yeah. When you ran the, oh yeah. You're better at running time than people. Yeah, I was I was trying to hit 37.5s and I ran 501.21, which is almost exactly like. So even if you feel really, so even if you're feeling really good and you like see the time that you're dead on, but you feel really good, you'll try and just stick with that time. Uh. I guess so. I don't really know. It's I kind feel of like a loaded question. I don't know why I asked that. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I've, I've, I've never really been in like great shape, re uh -huh. at least recently. Um, when I have been running with the clock, like, I don't know, when I ran the thousand with the clock, 
that was like my first race of the season and i was like i would like went out hard i got stuck in dead man's line i think i think you aj were in that race in what race it was the first thousand of the, uh, at reggie so yeah it was, I was, it was the second race. i think that's the race you you have kicked me um but yeah no i got stuck might have been huh <laughs> I, I i think i started out behind aj and i want to say i want to say aiden was in that race too it was the three of us on the was in that race. yeah and i started out behind you two guys and like aiden went out like nuts in the first like 200 and then you guys kind of yeah. settled in oh wait no and i remember then, this yeah and then he, i was like, like, like me in the first yeah, 200 yeah. like a good five seconds I'm like what is this kid yeah doing? no and then i was like all right i gotta get around these guys so i got in front of you two but then i was like i was probably like three or four seconds behind on god so there was like no one in front of me yeah and then I was just like watching the clock every time, just like <laughs> like fall yeah. farther and farther yeah, behind yeah. the pace. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I've never, I don't have enough. You just get caught recent moment, experience though. in terms of I haven't had a race where I've been like so good that I've been ahead of the pace. I've always fallen behind the pace. So <laughs> well, that's every runner too. But... Either or either been on the re- either on the right pace or fallen behind. So yeah, but no, I mean, I guess if I was feeling good, like I had, a, I had some re- like. For my standards ridiculous cross-country races my junior year considering i had done like very little running over the summer yeah like i've set minute prs on two courses um that, and, yeah but that's always what you gotta look for those little little wins right that you get. and that was that was a lot i think i want to say maybe like mental toughness because i've been more experienced because those two courses that I set such big PRs on were my also my first two cross country races the, the year from the year before. Okay. Um, so I think yeah, that was definitely just like mental toughness, just knowing like to push through it. And I think, yeah. So I, I guess at that point I I was feeling better and just pushed through. I don't really know where I'm going with this anymore. But no, no, I'm, I'm following you. I get it. No, yeah, completely. I get like, that. You're saying that you like you better like trying to like keep your pace and everything. You don't really focus on a person, but if you get wrapped up in the moment, like the emotions, the adrenaline, like we talked about before, like you just go with whatever you're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I guess, I guess to thinking about it a little more, I remember going into, I'll use Manchester as, as an example, cause that was my first breakout race of the season. Yeah. This was a few days after the relay that we did in Bedford. And I like felt like, eh, for that. Um, I remember we took it out pretty hard during that one. Um, but I guess it was only like a mile and a half or something. Yeah. But anyway, so I was going into that, uh, manchester race and i was like oh this like this course sucks i barely broke 20 last year um and i'm from <laughs> start line i was like oh yeah i'm just like i also oh no just kidding i had i had a like a pretty ish race at a oh it was the first meet i always forget what it was it uh, last year Worcester? not Worcester. what am i saying weston oh it was uh it was i know what you're talking about yeah. weston the one with yeah. the apple trees and the hairpin turn. Yeah, when it, yeah, that so got shoved into a tree. I I had like an <laughs> okay, I had like an air race there, but that was because me and Austin tried to hang in with like the main group. Yep. For the first mile, we went through like sub five thirty, and then, yeah, like, that's not a pace I can hold through five k yet. <laughs> um, I wonder who could have been the case of that. I wonder who could have been the me. reason that we did that. Could have been me. <laughs> yeah. Well, so... I tell you for sure, it wasn't a Weston kid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Was Sorry, Westy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, we kind of fell off there. And so I, I was, okay. So I was coming off like an, like an eh race. And then I remember halfway through that race, the Western race, I rolled my ankle and I was still kind of, my ankle was still hurting. I remember on the, like the first hundred meters of the Manchester race. Yeah. So on the start line, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna like survive this race. I don't care about oh, what yeah. time I run. I'm just going to get through this race. Everybody has those races. And cuz I mean that's the whole reason we run that meet is to just kind of practice running in it's bigger, a hill workout with bigger groups. Um and I remember just like suffering up that hill. <laughs> um Luke Height Camp. That was the one race he ever beat me. He passed me on the very last hill and I he was just like 10 meters he also me, did the entire the time. Day. The entire time. Like I would just try to push so hard to try to catch him yeah. and I could see him the entire last <laughs> two, one, one and a Torturing half miles. Torturing you. But now nah, he beat me. Um so anyway, what ended up happening is Henry was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take it out in a 540. I was like, 540? Like, my app, like I would run sixes, I think, yeah. my sophomore year. And so I was like, okay, whatever, I'll go out with him. I think we went out like 545. Okay, so but then, close. But then uh, I think I passed him when we started going on the uphill. Or no, I fell behind. I started falling behind when we, when we took the first hill up. Yeah. And then once it flattened out, I remember uh, Ben McQuinn passed me. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll like try to pace with him. And then I think we caught Henry and then eventually I ended up passing both of them. And then I came up to that second hill where Luke passed me the year before. 
and I was like, I got to the top and was like, that's it. Yeah. Like that wasn't that like nearly as bad as I remember. Yeah. And then I booked it so hard down. And then I had, I also got like a really bad stomach cramp going into on down that downhill. So my entire last mile, I had like, like my entire abdomen just like cramped up and I had to suffer <laughs> through that. But like the timer, I like, I literally did not believe the timer when it said I was like breaking 19 on that course. That was a whole minute faster than I ran the year before on a very slow course. And so I think, yeah, but I guess to answer the question that you were asking, like if, if I felt good, like would I take it? And I, and yeah, like I mentally going to that race, I was not there, but I think I realized part of the way through that, like, if I just pushed a little harder that maybe I could have a decent race. I ended up having you a really belong. Race <laughs> yeah, I guess, I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I saw, I saw McQuinn and Henry and I was like, you know, what? I'll just try to stay on them. And then I ended up passing both of them. So yeah. I mean, you never know. No, but all that rambling, like it just like prove, like it just gives so much information about the inside of your head when you're going through these races because every race is different. Like the expectations that you have when you go into it completely like just fall to pieces after like even the first two right. months. Yeah, and then like later that that season at DCLs, I was like, oh, I've had like a like a kind of a breakout season. I'm gonna try to like break 18 yep. at DCLs and try to win the race. I ended up going out once again sub 5:30 and then yeah. just died died so hard um so yeah you never know you, you could have you could go into a race like i don't like you you really got to get in like the right mindset for a race but like if you're having a, a like a crappy day like you can surprise yourself i know woody kincaid from from bowerman he broke 13 in the 5k the day he said he like he woke up he's like today's not my day and then he went out and ran like a 12:58 uh -huh. um and then like on the contrary, there was a DCLs race where I was like, okay, I'm going to like try to win this, but I got way too ambitious because I mean, partially it was because my pacing sucks and the JV kids all went out way too hard. So I was, they always do. I was up at the front, but they all ended up, uh, every single one of us ended up dying. I think Zach actually won the race oh. that day and he, he, yeah, was, he, he was behind, he was behind us for like the first mile. Yeah. I was hyped when he ran, when he ran so. that because I was pretty like. So yeah, yeah, you never know. The the whole expectations could blow up right in your face right there. You yeah, could, no. you could have a terrible day, and it could happen up. to anyone too at all. Like right. the top top runner or whatever, even Usting or whatever, he could like yeah. blow up. Or I mean, whatever. like take Elliot Kipchoge in the London Marathon. Like every everyone was hyped up for that race, and he ended up like he like got some ear infection or something, and it like totally screwed him up. Yeah, the littlest thing can screw you up. But uh, how about you, AJ? time or people which do you race better people for sure yeah because i'm not good at pacing at all do you think you've gotten better at time because i know i was a complete like i raced people like i had just terrible at racing time and feeling pace and stuff like that but i think everybody like on the team has figured out i've gotten better at it i'm not superb at it but i've gotten better but do you think you've gotten better at it it's like definitely gotten better it's still not where i need to be Mm -hmm. because but like i think i definitely have gotten better but i feel like i'm definitely more of like a people runner like going off of people because that's really my style of running like when i'm racing my style of racing is sticking with people and if this is too easy i move up and that just keeps happening so i think based off the way that i run races i'm definitely a person runner and you do that in the mile in the 5k right yeah where's the mile Although the mile the mile's a little different because like I've run like good miles only on a 200 meter track. So you're seeing the clock eight times. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's a little bit easier to like know when to move up. Yep. So that's a little bit more on time as for a 5k, you normally see the clock like once and that's at the end. So yep. yeah. that's true. That's true. But, right, you yeah. also, but you also get those mile splits called up by coaches and like parents and stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's why for me personally, like it's a little hard if I can like answer your question about time versus pace, because yep. my, like my reference, if, if we're, re if we're reason at Manchester race, I only saw the clock once at the bottom of the hill and once at the top of the hill. And that was it. Yeah. Um, and then obviously because that's such a hilly course, you really don't have much reference for pacing because Cause you're, you're tired more. Cause, cause you're either, you're hill. either like trying to survive an uphill or you're sprinting all out on a downhill. Yep. And neither of those really translate well to pace. Yeah. But, um, I think this comes into a better question of uh, the future. Um, and it's about you, AJ, and your expectations for when you officially become the captain and uh, senior leader on the team. Like, what expectations do you have for yourself? 
itself. That's a really good question. Um, for cross, well, one, I want to be the best leader, and that sounds outrageous considering it's coming from me. But like, I want to be like like what you've been doing. You've been doing that since I was a freshman, and you've been helping the freshmen, et cetera. You've been helping me a lot. You've helped Zach. You've helped Austin. I you have Paul. I can go on. So like, I think that's definitely something I want to do. But as for times, I want to be. I want to be where you are now, like 1630, I think, by my senior year. That would be a really good goal for me. Well, I think you could actually jump below that because I think you could have gotten close to 1640 this year if yeah. you didn't have to roll with masks and we actually got competitive running. So I think you could probably shoot a little faster than my times that I have right now. I think I could too because in the summer, I'm, we're still going to be running together because you guys aren't going to be at college yet. So no. I th I'll be doing college mileage for the most part. So I think that will definitely – yeah, assuming yeah, I don't sure. get injured, that would definitely benefit me. And then for track, I want to be at least sub four thirty in the mile, at least. Mm -hmm. So, and I think I, I can get done like four forty this year. How about uh, like expectations, like off the track? We'll say just as a leader in general on the team, in an upperclassman kind of role model. Basically, your expectations um, for the team itself, like not just you, but for the team. What do you want to? bring to the team and endorse in the team and make sure that the team is doing the expectations for them overall as a group next year? Well, I want to make it to States and cross. I don't know how likely that is because we've lost a lot of like good runners. Like we're losing well, our I top mean, two this year. Well, yeah. But I mean like the last what since I was a sophomore, so sophomore in my junior year. So the last two years we were expected to make the all state race, but we didn't, but that was just because of all like minor errors from other runners and everything like that. But yeah, it, like you have you, you got Zach, Austin, Paul and Adam. They really showed up this year. And that's fine. That's yeah. all you really need. Yeah, I mean, that's you, true. You could just qualify individually. Like, Connor did right, but I didn't mean to, and I didn't yeah. want to. <laughs> <laughs> right, but I'm yeah. saying, I was like, shitting myself on that line during the All State race. I mean, I feel like it would be better if we can make it as a team, or at right, least a couple right. of us, even if we don't make it. Right, but it also shows how strong your team is too. Yeah. And another thing I want to do, you said like off the field or off the track, I want to hold people accountable. Like last year, like I'm gonna call it Syria a little bit. Because <laughs> I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but he ran a 220, 800 his freshman year. And I felt like, like I said earlier with myself, I wasn't working as hard as I needed to be my freshman year. I say the same, I would say the same thing for him now. So like, I've been trying to help hold him accountable. So that's one thing I want to like do. So I want to hold him. people accountable and make sure that they want to, they're actually doing what they're supposed to be doing in order to get better. Because at the end of the day, you can say running is an individual sport all you want because of the times and that crap. But being really good as a team, I think, means a little bit more. Yeah, you really got to foster that, um, what's it called, team culture, running running culture. Yep. You, yeah. you want you want people, you want to just give off an attitude that will make like draw people to the sport and make people yeah. do it because they, they want yeah. to and enjoy it. And I think that's, that's, we benefited a lot. I think me personally from like with this whole Corona thing, how we all started running together and all that, like the WATC stuff, I think I've really yeah, seen like a, a really big boost in just like, I don't know, just, Morale. yeah, yeah. And just like everyone, everyone's more into running now than I feel like they we yeah. used to be. And adding think, on to that, yep. I just want to say like, because Alessia, you mentioned team culture. I think we did a lot of stuff in the past like couple of years off the track. Like we went to the, what was it? The new balance invitational meet. Yeah. We did that like two that years was, in a row. Yeah. Yeah. So that, and you had people over at like the last meet of the season this year or something. We did the, we went to Maine at your house. Yep. So I feel like off the, off the track is something that's kind of important. I think that definitely has to do with what Alessia said of building the team culture. Yeah. The team dynamic and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that's really all the questions I have. If you want to add on anything else, Alessio, any other questions? Yeah, I mean, I guess we have a few random topics, debate topics. I'm not really sure what right. these would be good for for this. I don't know. One of them I've been wanting to talk about, and I think hit him with it. This may, 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 might not be the best 
for uh, if for, I'll if I can AJ. answer it, I'll try my I'll try my best to answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whatever. We we can always just I know, you know. Let me just ask the question first, yeah, and then I'll hit, hit I'll forward. explain my thought yeah. process. Um, okay. So I just want to talk about like the best relay, like what you think the best relay is to run, maybe the most fun, most entertaining to watch. I guess maybe be a little more applicable to all of us. Okay. Um, okay. For, for me personally, I've only run the four by two, four by four, four by eight, and the oh, SMR. Is that it? <laughs> okay, but like I, I have. Okay, but like okay, I guess competitively, I've only really run the eight and the SMR, maybe the four by, I ran the four by four to big meet once and I, I lost it for us because I'm not a 400. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't know, I guess I, in the process of saying that I realized I've run more relays than I remembered. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe you just like, give us a rundown on some of the relays you've done yeah, and AJ, which, you hit, you what your thoughts off. were running those. And then maybe some other relays you enjoy watching. That's a really good question. Okay. So I would say the most entertaining to watch is the four by four, a hundred percent. Yeah. I, I hate running it, Let's but go. watching it. Cause I remember the first time I really experienced a good four by four. Well, a lot of four by fours was watching like Kersley last year, my freshman year. Yeah. Cause I was <laughs> amazed at what he could do because I've, I've never seen that before. Cause I didn't really, I wasn't really interested in running outside of like running other people running my freshman year so seeing so i never really like knew what was really good and seeing personally that kind of blew my mind and even last year because shula he came out of nowhere like he had that breakout run that was against ab and the four by four yeah that was amazing that i love watching that so i'd say that's definitely my favorite one to watch my favorite one to run i don't know the four by two is really fun but like competitively no not for me i like the four by like as much as i was complaining about doing it like I like the four by eight. No, you don't. Every time you said you've been into <laughs> well, the no, four no, by no, eight, no, you no. go. I right, correct you. Uh, correct. Okay. The four by eight. Me. Uh. That was beforehand, but like we even with the whole COVID thing, that kind of really changed my mindset of how I thought about it. Because uh, like before, when Coach would put me in a four by, eight, I'd be like, "Dude, are you kidding me?" But like now, <laughs> like not racing and still so long, it's kind of like I've come to appreciate it a little bit. If that makes sense. So I think COVID actually like changed my mindset and I actually would enjoy running that now. Nice. I don't know. Maybe it's because yeah. I haven't like raced a track meet race in a long time. I don't know, but I mean, that's currently how I stand. I'm going to say, cause I think I've raced every relay that you can possibly race in high school. <laughs> I've done four by two, four by four, four by eight, four by mile, SMR, DMR, that's, nope, just kidding. I haven't done Swedish, but that's just because I'm not. Okay, but that's like, yeah, those are like the random ones. Yeah, but um, you, you did you do like shuttles or something once? No, nope, yep, I've like, done shuttle hurdles yeah, twice. Hurdles, I remember Screw that. Screw you, coach. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. William says I did good in indoor, and I did shit in outdoor, probably because it was like triple the amount of hurdles I had to jump over, but right, and it's higher. Um. But I'm gonna have to agree with AJ. Four by four gets me the most hyped whenever I'm watching a track race. It's just oh, yeah, like sure. crazy to watch. Um, what else we got? I think SMR is up there too for watching, but also racing because you got that speed uh, factor into it. Because you got the 200s going off first, it's like boom, boom, and then you got the 400, boom. And it's all about the eight, and you just like okay. You got this distance you got to cover and everything like that based off the sprinters. And that's all about like catching and kicking and tactical race and stuff like that. It's just like, there's so much that goes into like how you run that kind of relay. Um, I know I ran it sophomore year. We went all the way to nationals with that. Um, and just watching them heat the meets before us, like it was a huge stadium and my heart was probably going like 200 miles an hour just cause I was nervous out of my mind. But um it's it was crazy to run it like just that big like feeling like and you're racing against other people who are like that 200 kids coming in to like another 200 all right 400 and i watch it back on video and it's like it's just like your, your heart just starts pumping while you're watching it it's like holy shit holy shit um four by mile probably the worst event to run <laughs> uh i don't know i, I really want to run a four by drop mile. the baton really in that Oof. people people can comment how they like on that but but it was hit out of my hand i promise i did not like just drop the four by on a on a handoff or whatever somebody hit it out of my hand that was the worst experience of my life it literally ran backwards 200 meters or not 220 meters 
Um, but yeah, that's my stand on that. Eight, four by eight, I've only run it just because of school record and because the 800 is my main event, but typic, but I run the 800 for the SMR and the 400 helps with the eight. So that's why I do that more often. And then four by two, that was just like once in a blue moon on that um, just for like a JV event or something. But in the DMR, screw that because <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not ever going to run a DMR again. Because if I do on this team, mentioned- I'm probably going to get put into the mile, which I don't want to run. <laughs> I mean, going like off of what you said, a couple of things, you were talking about like the DMR, the four by mile. Yep. Like those, I feel like are too boring to watch, if that makes any sense. Oh, they are. Yeah, for sure. Because it's like, and the four by one and the four by two, I feel like they're too short. To they're watch. too short. Like, yeah. Really I was going to say the exact same thing. So like four by four four by eight is like the max smr like those are the best ones to watch i'd say yeah and obviously racing is different but i feel like the smr i could see how you like that because like like you said you made it to national sophomore year well your sophomore year and if you think about it you can say i'm that guy i'm the distance runner on a team that made it to national well i also got i also got carried but well, we're not well, going to talk about you that. You can still say that. <laughs> if you ask anybody else there, they're not going to know. So, Yeah, they will because I ran too flat. <laughs> All right, well. Um, but yeah, no, I, I completely get what you're saying. Like, And that, and people are going to argue that the SMR is the easiest to qualify for nationals and everything like that. But at the end of the day, nationals is the nationals, and we hit the, we hit the time that we need to hit. So. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, any way to nationals is a good way. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I think we answered that one pretty well. What yeah. else you got for us? Uh, I mean, I guess I can go ahead and answer it just because. Uh, let's say running four by one is boring. It goes by like that. Yeah. Like I, I ran, I, I, I let off with the one time I, I ran the four, four by one and four by two. It's just boring because the difference in places is milliseconds. Because you can't really differentiate, right. like in a four by eight or four by four, you can differentiate the uh, each leg's time by like a good two seconds or so. While in the hundred meters, like if it's like a varsity hundred meter four by hundred meter race, the difference in times is only going to be like a tenth point, of a second, right. point something seconds. Yeah, I mean, but I, I guess from a, from a running standpoint, like, and just because I'm a distance runner, like the one hundred, it's like why why is this so short yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it literally ended yeah. and i was like i'm not even tired what huh i looked at my phone for one second what happened <laughs> exactly yeah. oh i think four by two is fun just because it's like a nice thing to just like hype yourself up for at the end of an indoor meet and it's got like the little bit of endurance aspect to it but you're still you still get to go like wicked fast uh four by four kind of hurts if you don't know how to run it and you know, mentally, just me as a freshman trying to break 60 every meet and running 60 flat every time. <laughs> um, that was kind of frustrating. And then at Frostsoft, when I got put in, I think I ran under either you or Phil Holmes' name in the 4x4 at Frostsoft our freshman year. And I got, so I, I was I was put as the anchor. I think you ran under Phil's name because it was supposed to be like four sophomores, mm-hmm. but it ended up being four freshman yeah. alternates. But but the thing was, you, you all, all, three of you guys, the first three legs were 57s and they were actually, we were actually in like second or third place. We were in a good position. Yeah, we, were, we were pretty decent. And then on the back, I got the back, I got the baton for the, the anchor leg on the back stretch. Everyone passed me. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah, I threw the baton. When we finished all that. Damn it. Oh, I see how. No, I'm just hey, kidding. It was, it was, I like, I like to think I was a 400 runner back then, but I definitely. Am no, not. you didn't do that bad considering it was a frost off me. Like, right. It, but I don't if have. If it was a varsity race. Yes. I'd I do don't, that. I don't have enough natural speed for the 400. Yeah. I have enough for the 800, but not for the 400. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, Let's see, four by eight. I, I, as a freshman, dreaded doing that just because, like, you know, pacing and having to run 800 in a relay. I don't know. It's just not that fun. But I think, but lately I've just, I've gotten hyped for it because it's like low key, low key could be my ticket to nationals if my legs decide to shut up. Yeah. But like, I think just, I think because of our team's composition, I think we could legit have a shot, even like indoor. I mean, I guess maybe not anymore with Corona and everything, but we could have had a shot at the indoor record. Yeah. I think so. Um, I think the best chance we had was when Tom and Capucci were here. Those, because they were both strong 800 meter runners. 
And if I was like another year, I think if I was a junior that year instead of a sophomore, I think we definitely could have mm-hmm. been at least very, very close, like within less than a second of this. Yeah, quarter. and I th- I think outdoors, you guys ran eight oh seven, which would have call- qualified you had you run that indoor. Right, but three of us keep in mind, three of us ran like two flat or two oh one. Oh no, I know. So if we had that extra leg, and it's something against it was it's something against Justin, like. He I mean, just, he was just as often. The same thing. If he was a junior that year, then we would have been like better off. But it, unfortunately, we just didn't have the um, depth in the 800 that right. year. And I, th- I, I think we still really don't have the depth in the 800 for our team personally. But like everybody I mean, did. I think, person. honestly, I think we could have a chance because I, you're, well, I don't know what you're at right now. You're probably like. I'm, I want to go for 153. Like that's okay. What you go 153. Bayona will probably break too. Yeah. Next year. Mm-hmm. If we, I if, we can, if I can go 153 like and Lyona can break two, all you guys would have to do is run like 201s. I mean, I, I th- could, I think I can do that. I think I ran a 206 last year. Yeah, no, I think AJ, you could do. It. I think genetically, I could do it. I just, I think tr- my training has just been questionable. <laughs> right, like you said, buffing. Um, like I, if, if I was in, if I was in peak shape, I, I don't know how prideful this is considering my 800 PR is a 213 currently. <laughs> Um, but that's like, that goes all the way back to freshman year. Yeah. Um, I think had I actually been able to train, I could have at least gotten like low twos, if not sub two by the end of my my high school career. And that's still the goal if I can get back on my feet, but we'll just have to see. So that's why, that's why I've been saying for the past like year or two, I think the four way could be our shot to nationals. And that's why I've been like hyping myself up for it. Um, but another thing I've been wanting to try is just the 1200 leg in the DMR, but I've haven't gotten that opportunity. Yeah. I ran that once. It was it was all right, but it wasn't like nothing special. It's just that weird mixture of like, it's kind of, it's kind of like thousand meter pace. Right. I just think it'd be interesting to try. I don't but know. It's just an extra like... 200. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, that's a weird one to run. That's why, right. I, that's why I think it's not an official race that you run every race. Yeah. Although it is, it is uh, the indoor distance relay in college. I know. Like they don't. Four by 12? No, not four by 12. No, no the DMR. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, like they do, that, I think I think they used to have the four by eight, but then they switched it for the DMR indoors. Yeah, but now um, oh, what's their name? Notre Dame. Oh my God, Yard uh, Yangus. I don't know if you know who that is. Yard Nagus. Yeah, yeah. I Absolute think... beasts. Is he the one? Is he the one who like? He like brought obliter- Notre Dame to like the like he obliterated everybody in the mile section of the four by. Yeah. Okay, DMR. I did see that race. Yeah. yeah. He was like twice though. I think they got it. It was like oh my God. Um, but yeah. The DMR can be hype, I think. I think I, here, AJ and I can compare this because we both play basketball. Mm-hmm. I prefer to watch college basketball than NBA basketball. I don't know if you're the same, AJ. I'd say it depends. I mean, I think there's because more college basketball is like, like anything like, can happen. Well, I'd say it's less politics, so you get like more like real, like actual basketball and like skills and stuff going on. Yeah, that's definitely true. Because the people are, they're still athletic, but less athletic. And I also think anything can happen. Like March Madness is one game versus the NBA playoffs is seven. Yeah. So like, it's really hard to pull off an upset in the NBA. College, you have a bad game, you're out. It doesn't yep. ma- really matter. Yeah. So I think I would agree with that. I think that that pretty much covers the real event. Yeah. So basically, screw the screw the sprinting events except the four by four, and uh. Four by mile and DMR are fake events. <laughs> <laughs> All that leads is four by SMR. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Well, let's see. I think we can do probably one more topic. And then we'll or I it just up. came up with a question and then immediately forgot it. Uh, question on the relays? Yes, yeah. Hmm. There's something to do with the relays. And I, gosh, whatever. If you think of it, just try it out. We'll, we'll talk about it. Here, I was looking through my notes. Um, I'm trying to think of something that's not going to take too long because these are all kind of... You know what? What's your favorite workout? What's, what's the one that like you, you one. see it and you're just like, do that's going to be a good go, day. Do you want to go different ones? Like types of hill workouts types of speed workouts types no, of just like something like specific like for and me it, for me personally i did eight by four hundreds with one minute rest okay. which is like it's just a really hard workout but i think it like really helped me okay um 
for the for when I ran the mile back last winter. So I, I guess that that would be what I'd say. It's not it's not a in the enjoyable experience in the moment, but I think it's very the best beneficial. workouts are never the most enjoyable. Right. AJ, how about you? Because I know you said you're a big fan of tempo workouts. Are we talking my favorite or my best workouts? Uh, I mean, that's not what I mean. I mean, I, the I one that you're good one. at and the one that you like benefit from is what you're saying, yeah. basically. Um, which one is it? The Farlex workout that we do on the fields. I really enjoy that one. That's yeah. usually one of my better ones every year. Those. <laughs> that's always because I'm out I mean, of shape. I love them. Yeah, I no, always, I, I fall so far behind them. I just don't like those because we run them in September or August when it's like right. still yeah. 80 degrees yeah. outside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then this year we weren't allowed to take our shirts off, and I hated that. <laughs> yeah, because we. I overheated. The girls like didn't want to see our abs. Yeah. So. And another workout, it was the last one that we did of cross. It was Coach D's favorite workout. I don't remember what it's called. Centrist workout, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. I oh, actually like that. Centrist 300s. No, it's. Um, is it? No, it's. Right. Uh, I know that one. I don't know if there's another central. They workout. did. Um, they did six, five, four, three, two, one. Then they did a two mile jog and then they did five by 300. So that's oh, what so they, they did. did it backwards. Okay. Yeah. I like that one because, like, by the time you get to the end of that workout, the whole I thing or just the six five four three two one. Yeah, because like it's an all that <laughs> bro. I don't know, bro. I like doing the question. I don't get tired. So. Bro, this is the question. The whole thing, so the six by the six five etc. The two mile jog and then the threes were just the six five four three two one. <laughs> I don't remember which one we did in cross. In cross, you did the one with the three hundreds. And yeah, that one. Okay, just clarify. <laughs> <laughs> because I know we do do a lot of the six, five, four, three, two, one individually. And Haffer Camp cuts out uh, the five and the one. That's my favorite workout, I think, because you get faster and you build up speed, but you're also like starting to hurt towards the end. During the that was that stuff. was my favorite freshman year, just because we we start we did like four, three, two, one, fifty. Yeah, and that one was like so easy. That's why I, I always like ladder workouts. That, <laughs> that one that one was too short though. Yeah, like you really didn't. I didn't really feel like I got much out of that one. Mm. And I think definitely like times wise freshman year. I mean, I think also freshman year, I was just not there mentally Yeah. Um, in winter. But like, if you just look at my times, like I was, I had just had no speed my winter Yeah. coming into freshman year. I think that's, I don't that, know. We, that's didn't, we, just didn't any, comes we just didn't do any good like speed workouts. That yeah, season. but that's where the adjustment comes in as a freshman in high school mm-hmm. with the train and everything like that. Um, yeah, but I, I like a lot of workouts. Like, um, AJ, remember when you guys ran the Catholic Memorial last year? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so me and Justin Lyona had to stay back because we had PSATs that day. And then we went out to the track and we did a simulation kind of thing. And we did 4, 8, 12, 1600, 12, 8, 4, all at um, 5K pace. So we had to try and keep it consistent. I think we sped up as we uh, declined the uh, length, but anything like that, like I really like that repetitions they aren't my favorite but i don't mind doing them i think how about your worst like what would you be your worst uh training workout to do i think for me personally i i have a traumatic experience with uh we did it was freshman year we did a two four six eight six four two and then you would just you jog what you did so like you run a 200, jog a 200, run a 400, jog, jog a 400, 400. et cetera. Okay. Um, and uh, it was basically at like the next distance pace. So like a 200 at 400 pace or 400 at 600 pace, yep. 600 at 800 pace, and then 800, I think, at mile pace. Um, and we ran that. It, uh, it was like middle of spring season, saw freshman year, and I ran it with Henry Tortora and Miles Foster and that sucked it was it was also like pretty hot that day not pretty hot it was like 70 degrees but it felt it was like 70 and sunny so you oh, know yeah, yeah. the no, track the track just gets so hot when it's i remember sunny. that workout that, but, like, that was that one, one of the i think that was one of the better brutal. workouts where i felt good after it not during it that was a really hard workout um yeah. yeah honestly just like the longer stuff i think my endurance just really hasn't really been great i remember also last year we did it in cross country we did like a two mile like two miles on two miles off it was like october maybe it was, we did it down cold spring it was like do a two mile like tempo and then take like a one mile jog and then do like a two mile tempo and then a one mile 
jog. I, but I remember you guys took it out like at like my 5K ra- race pace. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. Couldn't be me. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it might have been on God, I'm going to be honest. Probably. But oh. I did like one mile and was like, holy frick. It was like, <laughs> it was, I think that was like once again, like a, it was like 520 something. Which at the time was only ten seconds behind my official <laughs> mile PR, but I hadn't I hadn't run the mile in a while. Yeah. Um, How about you, AJ? Worst of, worst training uh, training uh, workout. Okay, I have it between two. It's either five by thousand or the twelve hundred that we did. Because the, well, the twelve hundreds I can't really have a valid opinion on. Oh, the twelve hundreds that, that we did at the beginning of cross this year. Yeah, those, those were horrible. Because of the masks, like to be honest. Yeah, so I can't really like say. Like we were about cruising five those, by but I just got out of breath so quickly. Yeah, because of the mask. Um, five by thousand, I can never have a good thousand workout ever. Like I can have good workouts like four in a row. Whenever it's thousands, I don't know what it is. I just can't do thousands mm-hmm. at all. Yeah, that's kind of like so a. That would say that's probably my worst. That's kind of a hard range of like workouts for me personally I, f- I feel like i think my thousands i would always kind of fall behind pace but they would typically like overall be like a pretty good workout i remember i ran 12s once as a freshman in spring track and it was during sp- spring break and it was like raining and misty and i was also sick yeah it was it was not a good time i think i only ran like two and then i was like all right <laughs> that's it <laughs> um but yeah I think this goes back to, uh, remember you said like, you like prefer running in groups. Um, this year, what helped me was like last year I had been in on God and foster, but I was still leading a lot of the workouts that we were doing and like setting the paces this year. I think though, Justin Audison had a really good year and he broke out and he really like caught up to me in terms, not totally caught up to me, but caught up to me in terms of, um, uh, uh, I don't know, athleticism in the sport. So instead of just resenting him and like trying to just like beat him the whole time, like I basically just used him not in like a bad way, but like those five by thousand workouts that you talked about, like I told him, I said, listen, I'll take three of them. If you take two of them and you just lead, I'm not going to pass you. I'm not going to do anything. Like you, it, when it's your rep, it's your rep. And like, that really helped me because it, it takes so much energy to lead for a race or even a workout that just even taking those two reps, like just a break, was so beneficial to me right and that's why like but he also hated me because i accidentally brought it through like a 230 through the eight and then we had like a 200 left he was like crying for like the last 200 (laughs) meters right i mean but that's like that's the whole reason you're on a team is just like like pacing is so helpful from your teammates yeah and that's like i remember in the pyramid workout that we did that the 248 yep or 2468 one i remember we we would like trade off like tortora a lot was in the or was in the beginning a lot for the first half and then he was like all right someone else take the front and we would just like swap out pacing yeah for that and that helped a lot and the same same thing for me um when i ran dcl's uh sophomore year i that was during my stress fracture period um and so i hadn't i had raced in a, in a bit before that but we had we had like a group of like four of us running together for like a big majority of the race and it helped a lot and same thing also like i said earlier with manchester once but when ben passed me um mcquinn passed me um i basically just stayed on him in pace so yeah, definitely the team aspect in pacing. Yeah, trading off really like that. important. Yeah. Going off of that, uh, Lyona, he goes hard on workouts. I think that really actually like helped me a lot because he goes out really hard in workouts. And like most of the time, he goes out at what my pace is I'm supposed to hit. And he's actually a pretty good pacer for, well, he goes over his paces, but like, what would he actually like paces he does well if that makes right. any sense yeah no, so he's, he's i don't know at, i find that very training i give him that he's yeah. very good at training yeah he's really good at like workouts it's just too. like a and weird that thing that like it just hasn't translated to his racing but that's he, he something popped else. off last winter yeah he did pop off last winter. Yeah, that was a race he, against arrow and caleb and Marco. He's a track I, he like he started he started he wrecked 240 and i was like holy frick yeah no and i was so pissed off especially for him when spring got canceled because he was literally going to absolutely destroy the 800. Um, and then yeah. everybody had problems this year for cross country. And I think everybody's going to have problems for track if nothing changes from uh, what the seasons do. But no, yeah, like he, he is a prime example of someone that would be excellent to train with because of pacing. Yeah. So I think he's helped me a lot. He definitely does not know that, but I think he definitely has helped me a lot. 
yeah, no, I think this is all good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. If you got nothing else, AJ, is there anything else you want to add real quick? Because I think we're going to wrap it up real soon. No, I got nothing. All right. Well, thank you very much, AJ Chiapetta, for joining us this week around the track podcast episode four. Uh, remember, guys, uh, we didn't put up a post last week for episode three. There was some uh, outside stuff going on, but we're going to keep trying to keep posting some more stuff, especially on the Instagram page. Uh, videos are going up on the YouTube channel. Um, all of it's around the track podcast. Uh, we got a Facebook and Twitter. Everything's going to be trying to get it amped up a little bit on the um, social media front. So uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, like interviewing with AJ, um, or even if you just want to ask us questions, like the topics and stuff, feel free to send us some messages. Uh, but thanks for turning into this week. AJ, thanks for joining us. And we'll see you yeah, next no week. Problem. Thank you. See you. All right. Bye.